And finally, my advice is start practicing it now. The time to learn the string ostinato is not when somebody says, can you write me a string ostinato to add? To Welcome to another episode of Music Monday. If you're new here, welcome. If you're an old friend, welcome. Makes more sense if you're Swedish, I suppose. Um, do feel free to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. So let's see what we're doing today. So I thought this week we would stick with one theme for the whole episode, and that is string ostinatos. So we're going to have a few examples that you can go and listen to. Quick explanation on what an ostinato actually is. A look at some of the patterns. Why are we talking about string ostinatos? And then I'll do a demo uh, writing a string ostinato in Logic. So. Here are some examples of ostinatos. ACDC, back in black. Classic. Guitar riff, which is an ostinato, a repeating pattern. Seven Nation Army by the White Stripes. And then film music was obviously going to feature. So Hans Zimmer's Pirates of the Caribbean theme. Going more classical, Holst's Mars is uh, a really good example of an ostinato. John Williams also um, liked using this particular ostinato. If you listen to uh, Mars from the Planets Suite, you will hear lots of inspiration that Mr. Williams got. And the last one from a classical point of view is Ravel's Valero. OK, so those are some examples, modern and classic. So what is an ostinato? So I decided to take this from Wikipedia, but I've highlighted some of the key words. I know I said it wasn't going to be boring, so um, I'll try and make this quick. One of the definitions is an ostinato, which is derived from the Italian word for stubborn. So be careful to avoid it when ordering pizza. It is a motif or a phrase that persistently repeats in the same musical voice and frequently in the same pitch. So it's a continuing repeating phrase. Now, that being said, the definition does go on a little bit further and gives us a bit more freedom musically. So the repeating idea, it could be a rhythmic pattern. So it doesn't have to be strictly notes. It can be on percussion as well, as in some of those examples. So it could be a rhythmic pattern. It could be part of a tune or it could be a whole melody. The next bit is interesting. Strictly speaking, ostinati should have exact repetition. So they should exactly repeat each, uh, each phrase. But in common usage, the term covers repetition with variation and development. So that means the definition of an ostinato has been changed to suit the way that we write music. So how do we use ostinato patterns? Typically, you pick a sequence of notes, possibly from a chord, and pick two, three, four notes to come up with a pattern. So they can be as simple as those examples 
you can see there. So they are absolutely um, copying each other until the last phrase of the second example. So this is where variation comes in. So the chord tone or the key may be changing. Do you want the ostinato to be in the melody or in the bass or both? Okay, in the example you can see there, that is a bass ostinato. And as things become more complex, as you want to introduce uh, more harmony, as you build up different instruments could be layered to accent certain beats. So they don't play the entire ostinato that is written in one instrument, they accent particular beats. So we're going to have a look at string ostinatos in the demo. The reason for that is it is a very common writing technique, no matter what style of music you are doing, string ostinatos come up very frequently. Spiccato is the phrasing uh, for the strings that we're going to use because it's nice and short, but without being plucked like pizzicato. When you're writing string ostinatos, remember to think about the players. So you don't want to necessarily have massive leaps in the notes because technically it may be difficult to voice those on a particular instrument like the violin. So if you think about a violin, it has a lowest and a highest note. It is going to be harder to play ostinatos at that very low or very high range because you have less choice, basically. And finally, my advice is start practicing it now. The time to learn a string ostinato is not when somebody says, can you write me a string ostinato to add to that piece? So practicing, even if it's not for a full piece, practicing writing is a key part because the more you do it, the easier it will become for you. Okay, let's jump over to logic. Okay, welcome to a logic session. I've broken this down into two parts or two examples. One is an ensemble patch from Albion One using high strings and low strings. So it is picking the instruments for whichever part of the keyboard you are playing in. Uh, that sounds like this. So that would sit quite nicely behind a lot of other instrumentation. If you wanted something, should we say more composed and perhaps thought out with more accents, um, I've used the BBC Symphony Orchestra to do. Uh, we've used violins uh, ones. We've got a second violin one, which I will come to. We've used violin two, viola, cello, and bass. So that sounds like this. Okay, so let's start with. Albion 1. You can see here are the MIDI notes. We could even view them as a score and you can see it is very, very simple basically. Um, if I show you keyboard, all we are doing is D, A, D, G, D, F. A 
an important thing to do and think about when you're doing this and playing it in is remembering to accent certain bits. So you'll hear that I tend to play the beginning of the phrase slightly louder than the end, so it tails off. You can see that if we go back to the piano roll, that we have these green colours towards the end of a bar and the accented red colour at the beginning. So that's a relatively simple violin piece. Uh, notice we did use spiccato as the accent. And then for the bass, I have created a uh, a complementary pattern which doesn't play as many notes. So we're accenting the first beat of one, two, three, and then we go slightly syncopated for the other two, but it comes around to repeat itself. So together they sound like this. And that is a great way to start practicing. Put some high strings, put some low string accents, and play around with the multiple patterns you can get. So let's switch our attention over to BBC SO. Now, for this, I have used the violins ones, and I have panned them to the left and to the right. So it creates a much wider sound. If we just hear those together. And what I've done is offset the second set of notes. So they are moved in ever so slightly. by uh, a sixteenth of a beat. So without that, you would just have this. But if you pan them and slightly shift them, You have to be careful about how much volume you put into uh, doing that echo because it can start to sound a little odd. It's a bit like you would do with um, recording two separate guitar takes and panning them left and right. Similar technique there. Then we've got violins too. which just have a, an extra dimension to them. They're basically doubling violins one, but they, they are recorded differently. OK. Then for the viola, this is where I've decided to stick with the eighth note pattern and it complements the violins one and two and also changes key. So combined, we've now got And the last bit was doing a similar pattern to what we did with uh, Albion 1. And that is just doubled in the bass. Thing to notice here is I have used staccato, not spiccato. It gives a slightly more 
uh, the sound rings out a bit more and that's absolutely fine for this sort of rhythm because they're not as close together as we have in the violins. So spiccato or the ostinato close pieces if you're at 16th notes I would def or shorter you would definitely want to be using spiccato as your performance technique. Um, think about staccato if there is a longer gap. So if you're up to quarter notes or eighth notes, possibly there's the option to use staccato there. That's it for the demo. Thanks for watching. I hope you found that useful. Um, if you haven't got the hint, um, <laughs> if you have got the time to click like and subscribe that would be great i'd love to hear your comments uh, down below um, and i do endeavor to answer all of them have a lovely rest of your day bye for now